welcome fans of flip clocks. This digital clock by Lux caught my eye, so I thought I'd take a look at it and maybe learn a little bit about the history of this company called Lux. And what I found out was that the Lux clock manufacturing company, Waterbury, Connecticut, was founded by Paul Lux in 1914. In 1954, production facilities were set up in Lebanon, Tennessee, and also later in Canada, in Oakville, Ontario, in the late 1950s. In June of 1961, the Robert Shaw Fulton Controls Company bought out the company and produced clocks under the name Robert Shaw Controls Company Lux Time Division. So we got on the internet and did a little searching and Etsy was a really good place to find some of these clocks and I really appreciate the use of these uh, pictures from these shop owners and look in the description to check it out. And some of these clocks are just really awesome. I really like that. They, that looks like a tape measure clock and this one here, uh, it looks like a sundial and it looks like something I almost have to have. But the Lux company produced a wide variety of clocks. This is like a mantle clock that looks sort of art deco and this is um, a little frightening. They produced a dog clock, and it looks like the same artist might have carved out this um, cat clock. And this is a Shmu, that's from the little Abner uh, comic strip. And this is, well, it's really pretty colors. And what, what I also found out was that many of these novelty clocks were intended to look like they were carved from wood. In fact, they were molded from a material called Sirocco or Sirocco wood. It's made from wood pulp and fillers mixed with flowers, a binder, and other materials to make it stronger. There's really neat clocks, but some of them are, well, they're kind of scary looking. And speaking of scary, I guess this was back when clowns were not so scary. Anyway, the clocks, like I said, very wide variety, and they've really come into favor with some collectors, even though there were many, many produced back in the day. They were, they were produced in, in mass. What kid wouldn't like a clock like that? Have a happy day. So we're gonna go ahead and look at our clock in more detail. So we've got the clock here in Flip Clock Fan Studios. The model 5010-01. It is supposed to be a new clock, so... Really small numbers for such a big clock, and made in the USA. Very smooth. On the box it said that turn the knob in the direction of the arrows that, that's printed on the case. There are no arrows on this case. Very smooth. And there there is no light with this clock. So it'd be a desk clock you might see in someone's office or something. Our little tag here says uh, Robert Shaw Controls Company, Lux Time Division, Lebanon, Tennessee, USA. 3 watts, 120 volts, 60 hertz. So as I'm scanning this clock, I am not seeing any screws, so that's always really interesting. This looks like uh, we're going to have to attack it from the front. So, of course I'm going to open it, because that's what we do here at Flip Clock Fans. We take clocks apart for some reason. But this may help someone who, who may want to get into this clock, and of course I just want to see what's, what makes it tick. And look at that, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to pull that down. I'm thinking it through, th but uh, hey, at some point we're going to use Gorilla Tape. You know, if you've seen any of my videos, you know I like this stuff. This is actually Gorilla Packing Tape. Maybe you can figure how I'm going to incorporate that. But anyway, get back to this. You, you think you might want to put something under there and pry that up, but, but th it's always got some danger with it. And there's an aluminum face back there, and I really don't want to crimp that. So I'm going to try to just use brute force here. There, it came off. Now, again, when you do stuff like that, firm and steady, you don't want to be aggressive. And it actually came right off, so I pried the top um, moderately and was able to get that out. So again, I'm looking at this, and as I study it, it looks to me like they assembled the clock and then they took this um, aluminum piece and just pressed it in. So we've got to get that out. You're, you'll be tempted to um, pry it out with a flat piece of metal or a stick or something, but don't do that. Uh, this is a job for Gorilla Tape. 
So what I'm doing is I'm going to make a handle of sorts to try to pull this free. And like I said, if you could see what I see up close, you can tell this was pushed in by, by one of the uh, assemblers. Probably back in the early 60s. That's when the, the Robert Shaw Controls Company took over and that's how this is named. So when we're doing things like this, we've got to take our time. We've got to make sure we don't get over aggressive. We've got one shot really to get that out without destroying it. Now it's coming loose here, but you still, it's gonna be real easy to bend that. This is, feels like a, about as thick as an aluminum can. And it looks like we did it. The only thing is this Gorilla Tape is some tough stuff. So we're hoping that we don't pull off any paint when we take this off. I did try not to get it on the Made in USA lettering. And so far so good, it's coming off. Now that, that could have took that black paint off there because that actually is black paint on that front. So what do we got? You can see the whole thing is one piece they've stamped out. And they did a really good paint job there. I thought that was plastic. Anyway, we got to protect that. That's going to be damaged easily. So you see that there's two screws here that's holding the mechanism in place. Rule number one, see a screw, take it out. Nine times out of ten. It's got to be the motor. And I'm just trying to work it out gently. And I can see that this, you can actually see some scrape marks where this was actually kind of forced in. And of course it always helps to take the knob off. So we get it out and we can see why the clock is so big and the letter is so small. It's got wheels it's got to deal with and it's got a fairly good sized motor and gear housing in there. Again, the clock moves very smoothly. Now looking at the motor, that that's some kind of a cardboard thing covering this wheel. And that's the rotor. Very similar to the Copal's mechanism, but it's open. If, if uh, you might understand what I mean, it's, it's, it's right there out, out there in the open. We're going to energize the clock. And you can see the motor started right up as you would expect a new clock to do. It is bigger than than a Copal motor, but it's open. Like I said, you can see right down into, into like a squirrel cage there that's normally covered up. And this cardboard looks like it's impregnated with uh, varnish or something as a heat shield or dust shield or both. I can't tell. I can see some of the assembler's fingerprints all over the front of this thing. That's kind of interesting because I know I didn't put all those prints on there, but it didn't matter because it's hidden behind the, the front the front piece, the front bezel, you may want to call it. So reassembly, we've got to push this back in without doing too much scraping or scratching. Screw the screws in, of course. And then I'm already thinking ahead and thinking, I've got to get that metal piece back in there. We've got it out without bending it. Now we've got to get it back in without screwing it up. It makes you wonder if they had a, a method or if they just jammed it right in there. I'm sure they had a box of them, so... We've only got one, so we're going to take our time with this. It is definitely barely going to fit. Like I can tell, it is going to fit. I'm just going to take my time replacing that. Again, it's a one-shot deal. It went together just fine. Now it goes on. No problems. So I'll wipe some of the dust and fingerprints off and then just replace my my front cover here we're going to have to pry up the case again there's a little give in the plastic i don't feel like there's any give in the front 
clear piece here. So I don't want to just push that in. You could do what I've done in some clocks and take a blade to try to pry that up. But really, it looks like it's going to work good if I just use force here. Moderate force and taking my time. And it does. It goes right in there just fine. And we're back in business. So I learned a little bit about a company, a U.S. clock company that I really never knew much about before. Thanks for taking the time. When you get the time, come visit us at flipclockfans.com.